a good cover song is hard to find. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 worst cover songs. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at more of the worst cover songs in existence, and ranking them based on not just their own merits, but the quality gap between it and the original. If you don't see a cover song you think should have been on this list, be sure to check out our original Top 10 Worst Cover Songs. Number 10. Love Will Tear Us Apart, Fall Out Boy, originally by Joy Division. When routine bites hard and ambitions are low. Yeah, Fall Out Boy, if you could just go ahead and not touch the classics, that would be great. Who you gonna call? Joy Division's original is an iconic 80s track thanks to the instantly recognizable keyboard and bass melodies, and Ian Curtis's bass baritone vocals. The single was released one month after his suicide, and his pain is clearly conveyed through his performance. And then there's this. Patrick Stump's cliché teen rock angst is far inferior to Curtis's genuine pain, and the angry sound found in the chorus, complete with a crescendo of drums and Stump's forceful vocals, takes away from the personal and emotional sound of the original. Sorry, FOB, but this song is not in your wheelhouse. Number 9. Sweet Child of Mine, Sheryl Crow, originally by Guns N' Roses. Sweet Child of Mine is a classic rock staple. Slash's melodic and heartwarming guitar riff is one of rock's most iconic, and Axl Rose's vocals, while screechy as ever, are infused with layers of emotion, and the song truly stands out in the sea of classic rock. On the other hand, Sheryl Crow's version is just bland. It sounds like countless other acoustic rock songs, complete with rather indistinguishable chords in place of the iconic guitar riff. Crow's vocals are stellar, we'll give her that much, but we lose the edge and aggressive sound of the original. It doesn't help that it was first featured on the soundtrack for the lackluster 1999 Adam Sandler film, Big Daddy. Number 8. Under the Bridge, All Saints, originally by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Under the Bridge is one of the Red Hot Chili Peppers' most distinguishable songs. It features Anthony Kiedis' signature blend of emotive and funky vocals, and it keeps things fresh by beginning rather understated before launching into Flea's groovy bass line and choir vocals. It's an instantly recognizable song, which is more than we can say for the All Saints version, which sounds just like every other pop R&B tune of the late 90s. It's instantly forgettable. Just water under the bridge. Number 7, Seven Nation Army, Marcus Collins, originally by The White Stripes. Seven Nation Army is a rock classic thanks to its stadium rousing guitar riffs, thumping bass line, and Jack White's hostile vocal performance. There's a reason why it's become a staple at sporting events. It has the ability to rile a crowd and get them pumped for battle. And then, the X Factor's Marcus Collins destroys all its power by turning it into a slinky pop tune. Marcus's soul pop vocals don't suit the song's aggressive lyrical content, and the instrumentation results in party fun rather than antagonism. The lively production is great, but Seven Nation Army was not a great pick to showcase Marcus's soul pop sound. Number 6, One Way or Another, Teenage Kicks, One Direction, originally by Blondie and The Undertones. Dear God, One Direction, if you happen to get back together, please never cover a rock song again. 
They took on the 70s with Blondie's One Way or Another and The Undertone's Teenage Kicks for this medley. I'm gonna call it on the telephone Have it over cause I'm all alone As it was created for charity purposes, we can't be too harsh on it, but still, ugh. <laughs> The band's poppy vocals are significantly tamer than Deborah Harry's raspy, creepy performance, and Teenage Kicks seems shoehorned in for no reason whatsoever. On top of that, the music video for this disturbing song about a stalker shows the band in the shower, on various monuments, and performing for third world children. Nothing about it makes any sense. Number 5. Back in Black, Shakira originally by ACDC. Shakira performed a cover of ACDC's Back in Black for her Live and Off the Record album, and it has absolutely no reason for existing. It begins with a swing, coffeehouse sound, which is actually pretty interesting and original, but then the guitars blast and what follows is a carbon copy of the original. with Shakira's borderline unintelligible vocals in place of Brian Johnson's iconic screech. If you're going to cover a song, at least put an original spin on it and make it your own. Shakira didn't, and it just comes across as lazy, boring, and bizarre. But hey, at least the band rocked. Number 4. Fuel, Avril Lavigne, originally by Metallica. Turn on, I see red. Fuel certainly isn't Metallica at the height of their talent, but it's still a powerful, hard-hitting song, complete with thunderous guitars, a kick-ass solo, and James Hetfield's signature husky and energetic voice. And while Avril Lavigne certainly tries, she simply can't match the original's frenetic energy. She's introduced as a small woman who rocks big, but it seems only one part of that is right. Throughout the song, Levine simply stands on stage and performs with the energy of a brick wall, like she was thinking about a gas bill she forgot to pay. Despite the band's lively attempt, it's a boring performance of a high-energy song. Number 3. You Shook Me All Night Long Celine Dion and Anastasia, originally by ACDC. Okay, you know what? New ground rule. No more covers of any track from the Back in Black album, especially if you're just going to copy the songs verbatim. Like Shakira's cover, this live performance from Celine Dion and Anastasia is a complete replica of ACDC's You Shook Me All Night Long, only with the women's country vocals. You It does absolutely nothing original. The vocals aren't interesting enough to distinguish it from the original, and the ladies perform with little energy or emotion. There is no reason for this to exist, so let's just pretend that it doesn't. Number 2. Smells Like Teen Spirit. Take That, originally by Nirvana. Covering Smells Like Teen Spirit is never a good idea, even if you put an original twist on it like Daniel John's. Hello, hello, hello. Take that mistakenly performed Nirvana's genre-changing Smells Like Teen Spirit live at Earl's Court, and viewing it is just as cringeworthy as anything Michael Scott has ever done. What were they honestly thinking? Covering this classic so soon after Cobain's death was dumb enough, but they proceeded to crap all over his name with awful, amateurish guitar playing, painfully flat vocals, and a complete lack of energy. This is so bad, it verges on surreal. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions.
one, Faith, Limp Biscuit, originally by George Michael. Well, I guess it would be nice if I could touch your body. Just like with Behind Blue Eyes, Limp Biscuit has made it abundantly clear that covering the classics wasn't their forte. And yet, Limp Biscuit and George Michael are about as incompatible as oil and water, and what results is a terribly lame rendition of Michael's classic. Limp Biscuit have turned this timeless dance rock tune into a screaming mess of dated new metal, complete with Durst's whiny vocals, embarrassing screaming, and idiotic record scratching. We suppose it would be cool if you were 13 years old, but for the rest of us, this is nothing but a shameful take on a classic song. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.